in order supposedly to hold the church together and govern her. But what do we see? Uh, great theological chaos that makes the, the small disagreements that Orthodox hierarchs have between each other look like child's play compared to what's going on in the Catholic world, uh, theologically speaking. <laughs> I have to, I'm trying to be respectful, but I had to laugh at this part when I originally saw it and I, I still am laughing now. Um, the small, the small doctrinal disputes that you guys have. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? First of all, there's a fundamental difference between our theological controversies and the Orthodox. Cause number one, we have a way of settling them. They don't. We both have theological controversies, but we have a way of settling them. We have the papacy and ecumenical councils. They don't have either the papacy and they don't have ecumenical councils. They don't have either. So they don't have a way of settling this on a universal level. So already at the outset, from, from right out of the gate, we have a fundamental difference. At least we can settle our problems. You're still dealing and wrestling with heresies from the 5th century. So it's it's incredible to see that, but small disagreements. Okay, let's uh, let, let's see here. Well, since we're talking about the filioque, there are Orthodox who accept the filioque, and they're they're not a small minority. Plenty of them, including Orthodox bishops, accept the filioque, or at the very least, do not believe that it is heretical. They believe it's a legitimate theological opinion. And then you have other guys like him who say this is heresy. You can, in fact, see this mentioned by uh, the late Timothy Ware. In fact, I inter interviewed him on the show, uh, but he, in his book on the Orthodox Church, points this out. There's differences among the Orthodox on the filioque. I forget the analogy he uses. Maybe the doves and vultures or something. I forget. It was, it was something like that, but there's some who are just opposed to it. It's heresy. Others who say, nope, it's legit. Others who are kind of in between. It's a theological opinion, you know, but we shouldn't condemn it as heresy. There's a huge difference among the Orthodox on something very important here. I mean, this is very important to Father Trinum, as you can see. And yet the Orthodox don't have a solid uh, answer on this question. Uh, so small disagreements. The filioque alone, if that was the only different disagreement among the Orthodox, would be enough to refute what we just heard from Trinum. That's not a small disagreement. Oh, but wait, there's more. There's much more. What about the Orthodox in their dispute on the role of the first among equals? They can't even get that right. They have an entire schism going on right now in Orthodoxy over that doctrinal issue, over the role of the protos, or the first in the church. What is the role that that first among equal, uh, equals actually has? There's an entire schism between Russia and Constantinople and Alexandria, among others, on this question. There's an actual, full-blown schism over a matter of doctrine with no end in sight. And no way to really fix it because the one thing that could fix it would to be, to be able to have a settled view on the role of the first. That's the only way to fix it. So they are having a dispute on the only thing that could actually solve the dispute if they had it somehow in order, which they don't. And without the ability to have an ecumenical council and showing the uh, complete uh, uselessness of their most recent uh, Holy and Great Synod, um, I don't see how they're going to resolve this. That's a huge issue, though, right? You have an entire schism going on in orthodoxy, massive problem over doctrine, and it's a small dispute. Who, who is he trying to fool here? I'm sorry, not buying it. That's a big problem. Schism's a huge issue. Your, your church is torn in half right now with no way to fix that. The only way to fix that is to have the papacy. You don't have the papacy. You don't even have your first among equals lined out. You can't fix this. Number three, the whole rebaptism controversy. 
in orthodoxy, rebaptizing people, which is sacrilegious in nature, according to the fathers. Many orthodox are going to rebaptize, validly baptize people because they're going to say, no, no, it wasn't actually valid. So there's a massive controversy on this issue. The late Metropolitan Callistus Ware, in a video that seems to have been removed from YouTube, uh, once noted that this is scandalous on part of orthodoxy. And he had hoped that the great and holy council of creed in 2016 would resolve the issue, but it didn't. I think it was 2016. He had hoped it was going to resolve the issue, but it came and went and didn't do anything, let alone resolve that issue. Took a hundred years to prepare a council that belly flopped and did absolutely nothing. It's sad. Uh, but that is the reality. T tell me that's just a small debate, though. It's a small issue compared to what we're dealing with. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. We, we have debates in the church, but not only do we have a way to settle them, I'm not so sure that they're uh, much bigger than some of the issues that they're wrestling with. And a lot of the issues that we're wrestling with, the same issues they're also wrestling with. They wrestle with the concept of uh, contraception, artificial contraception. That's a big debate in Eastern Orthodoxy. Tell me that's a small issue. They are wrestling with the doctrine of apocatastasis, which is a form of universalism, that eventually everyone is going to be saved. There are plenty of Orthodox who affirm apocatastasis, and others who would say, no, this is absolutely heretical, and this is condemned by ecumenical councils. And so you have a massive debate among Orthodox on this question of apocatastasis or universalism. Small dispute, though, right? Small issue. Uh, women's ordination is also debated in Eastern Orthodoxy. I, mean, I can give you a huge laundry list. We can be here for days. For days. But women's ordination? Yeah. Yeah, some Orthodox believe women can be priests and should be priests. Some say, no, you can't do that. Well... Small issue, though, right? This is, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not buying this. This is just incredibly absurd. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see the full video, go to the link in the description. And also, while you're at it, hit the subscribe button. God bless. Are you confused about how Catholic teaching authority works? With encyclicals, papal bulls, councils, and many other things, it's easy to get confused on what is authoritative and what is not. Fortunately, at MaximusInstitute.com, I have prepared a course explaining the magisterium from A to Z. Visit the website and check out the course, Understanding the Magisterium, for more information. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. See you next time. God bless.